Hello, and welcome to the first technology and teaching update. When we first reviewed the Soundbrenner Pulse about six months ago, we left our review with the sentiment that a vibrating metronome is a really cool idea, but it proved a lot harder to use than expected. Click here if you haven't gotten a chance to watch that video yet. Don't worry, I'll wait. Did the Pulse get easier to use? Has it improved my sense of time? Is it the next revolution in metronome technology? Well, we'll get to that. But first I wanted to take a moment and thank everybody that's watched that video. It is by far our most popular video. And because of that, I want to go through and answer a lot of the questions that you guys have had. The first question I got had to do with battery life and charge time. This didn't seem incredibly important to me at the time, as it felt like it was good enough. Though, I would not consider myself a power user. I was using the device at most a few hours a day and leaving it to charge overnight when it died. While I did notice the battery indicator in the app, I rarely paid attention to it just because of how liberally I was using the device. However, if you're using the Pulse in long rehearsal settings and often and on stage, I can see the need to know this information. So I set up the time-lapse camera and ran the Pulse from the medium vibration setting at 100 beats per minute from a full charge until the battery died. I did this both with the Bluetooth connected and completely on its own. I then used a 2.1 amp charger, the standard fast charge charger today, uh, to charge the battery back up. Both with the Bluetooth being connected and without the Bluetooth being connected, the Pulse lasted for roughly 5 hours and 45 minutes, and it took 2.5 hours to charge. I had two comments come in that were concerned that the DAW, or Digital Audio Workstation, plugins are currently only available for OS X. While it's traditionally accepted that Macs run audio software better than PCs, the last five years of quality software fixes and hardware upgrades have shown that Windows machines are just as good at Macs at these applications, and it really comes down to what works for you. I myself run Mac, but that's just because it was the standard when I got into all the stuff, and now my stuff is on that stuff. As far as the DAW tools are concerned, I actually have not had the chance to use them. So, if you've used the DAW tools, and you want to comment on it, please let us know. We'd love to hear what you have to say about them. I was asked how it performs live, and while I was kind of able to try this out, I'm not sure if I'm really going to be able to answer it in the way that you're really looking for. Currently, I'm not playing with any bands that do sequence tracks, so when I'm using a metronome, I'm using it to give myself an idea of the tempo before kicking a band off. We don't need to be locked together for the entire time. Using setlist mode made this easy to have all of the tempos queued up and ready to go. This, however, is something that's common in metronome software, so it's not much different than using a regular, you know, smartphone metronome. Uh, what I'd be interested in seeing is how the pulse works with multiple metronomes at the same time. And so if you've had experience with that, again, please comment below. We'd love to hear from you on that. Related to this, I had a couple of comments asking about modifying a setlist song so that it could be programmed with tempo changes. If you've got a song that has, you know, eight measures in one time signature and then switches to another. This was something I talked about in the original review. What this device is screaming for is the ability to program entire songs. Count-ins, exact number of measures, time signatures and tempo changes. And it's really the next big step that Soundbrenner should take with their software because not only was it something I thought of before, but something that people asked for. One issue I mentioned in the previous review was that sometimes, particularly at fast speeds, the pulse has trouble keeping up. The Bluetooth and the buzz tend to lag a bit. A few months back, Soundburn released a firmware update to correct this issue. In general, there seems to be a much better connection between the pulse and the metronome app, and they move together in much better sync. I was asked if the pulse would work better on different areas of my body. I had actually tested this out in the first review and settled it on my left arm because it seemed to work the best for me. However, I could totally understand if it worked out better for someone else in a different spot. What this really got me thinking about was if the pulse maybe isn't the best idea for drummers because there is so much rhythmic body movement going on that would throw you off from these pulses that you're feeling, particularly rhythmic body movement that doesn't necessarily adhere strictly to the downbeat. To test this out, what I did was I decided to play some guitar with the pulse. I put it on my left ankle and played the guitar in hopes it would make it easier to play with. It didn't. 
which I suppose brings me to the real personal update portion of this review. The whole reason I wanted to do a follow-up review is because I had trouble using the Pulse effectively when I first got it. By the comments it should be noted that it was the same for many of you. I originally thought that I would simply be able to put on the Pulse and be able to play effortlessly. When I put it on for the first time, it felt as though I was using a metronome for the first time. I couldn't stay with it. Eventually I would start to feel kind of comfortable with it, and then I would realize I was nowhere near its click. It was very frustrating, and thus I've spent the last six months working with the Pulse trying to get better at it. My main method has been to start with the click audible in my ear and slowly turn it down as I go. Did it work? Well, not exactly. If I'm doing something mindless, like running a sticking exercise that I'm already pretty good at, then I can usually use the pulse just on its vibration. However, the second I have to use my brain, I need to have the audible click. Why is this? Well, I think what it comes down to is that as musicians, our medium is audio. Yes, we feel the drums as we play them, but we're really responding to the sounds around us and how the sounds that we make interact with the sounds we hear. We're used to hearing the steady beat, not only from metronomes, but from within the music we listen to and perform, and I think this is what makes it so hard to work with just the vibration of the pulse. Now, what the pulse has done for me is allowed me to get very comfortable with an almost inaudible click. I think this is beneficial because it means I have to dedicate less of the auditory space to that click, and I can hear more of everything else going on around it. I also really like the feel of practicing with the pulse on and the click very low. Is it really helping me improve my time? I'm not sure, but it really feels like it, and I really like the practice environment of using the pulse. In the end, however, a musician's notepad is really about the art of teaching private lessons, and most of the time I find that teaching with a metronome is about the broad stroke of it. Teaching with the pulse, working with the pulse, has been about putting on the finishing touches. It is not the revolutionary device I thought it would be, the one that would eventually replace the audible click completely. Instead, it is a device for those looking to work on the finer points of their playing. It allows an experienced user the ability to close the gap between the way they feel the beat and how the beat actually feels. I wouldn't recommend it for every student, but I would consider it for students that have been playing for a while looking to really concentrate on improving their time. Well, I hope I answered all your questions about the Soundbrenner Pulse, but if I haven't or if you just want to talk about it, make sure to leave a comment below. I would love to have the discussion with you. What should we feature next on Technology and Teaching? I do my best to keep up, but I feel like I'm always late, so if there's something cool or interesting technology-wise that you're using, please let us know, because I'd love to take a look at it. Well, I think that should do it. Let's hit it.